more and more devices using GPS, the need for correct GPS antenna placement has never been more important. Because of the high frequency and low power output of the GPS satellite, the antenna needs to be placed outdoors. Unlike the signal from a TV satellite, which comes from a single direction, the GPS signal comes from all directions in the sky. First, decide which antenna you'll need. The standard rooftop antenna, which we'll be installing in this video, the shelter antenna for places where it must be flush against a surface, a high EMI antenna for locations with a high degree of electromagnetic interference, or a window mount antenna for tall buildings where you may not have rooftop access. Next, survey your location to figure out the best place to install your antenna. The ideal position is as close to the GPS equipment as possible while still providing at least a 270 degree view of the sky. This is what a correctly positioned antenna would see. There are no obstructions more than 30 degrees above the horizon, nor are there any obstructions 360 degrees horizontally. This is what a marginally placed antenna would be able to see. There are obstructions above the 30 degree mark, in this case walls, that are blocking the signal from reaching the antenna. The proximity of the walls mean that the GPS antenna will only be able to receive signals for the periods of time when there are satellites in this portion of the sky. Brandywine's GPS timing receivers will be able to function provided that at least five satellites are in view simultaneously at some period of the day, but will continue to work afterward with as little as one satellite. By simply moving the antenna 50 feet, we have improved the signal reception significantly. While there are still obstructions more than 30 degrees vertically, the antenna now sees enough of the sky to continually track multiple satellites. Optimal performance is always obtained by putting the antenna in the best possible location. Cable runs should be as short as possible, as at the GPS frequency, losses are significant, and long cable runs of 100 feet require a special low-loss cable or signal amplifier. Mark where you'd like to place your antenna, and then the next step is to measure the distance the cable will run from the antenna to the equipment, taking care to mark the path of the cable. The first step in installation is to take stock of all of the parts and tools needed to install your GPS antenna. Be certain to follow all safety codes and local requirements. First and foremost is the GPS antenna itself. Also included is the lead-in cable. The cable length should be based on your needs. The standard cable supplied is a 100-foot RG58 cable. For longer runs, contact Brandywine to recommend a solution. And the lightning arrester, antenna mount mast adapter, an inline amplifier. All Brandywine antennas mount using a 1-inch 14 UNS 2A thread, typically used in marine application. Thread the leading cable through the mast adapter and connect it to the antenna. Screw the antenna onto the mast adapter and position it at the location you surveyed earlier. Run your cable from the GPS antenna along the building along the path you marked earlier. Install the optional lightning arrestor and inline amplifier. The lightning arrestor should be placed in a position where there is a low impedance ground point. Connect your antenna to your GPS device. Make sure that you check to see if it's working. Congratulations, you have now installed your antenna. Remember, you need an open view of the sky, at least 270 degrees horizontally, and avoid obstructions higher than 30 degrees above the horizon. Thank you for watching. Look for our other videos to see how to install a cabinet mount and a window mount antenna. This video has been brought to you by Brandywine Communications, leading provider of GPS-based time and frequency products.